الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم أما بعد لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد هذا خطاب للمؤمن وللكافر بعد الموت Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing everyone after death. But in particular here, those who are heedless, those people who lived for this dunya and not for the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Indeed, you have been heedless about all of this. What's all of this after you die? You have seen the reality of death. You have seen the reality of the angel of death. You have seen the reality of the grave. You have seen your place in heaven or hell. You have faced the questioning in the grave. You have seen all of that. So everything is so clear. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ يَعْنِي بَصَرُكَ نَافِذٌ قَوِي تَرَى وَتُعَايِنٌ كل ما تكلم الله سبحانه وتعالى به في كتابه وعلى لسان نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم. Everything that you have been told in the Quran and the Sunnah, you're seeing it live. The reality of people who are heedless, it's because they are not taking the recommendation of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم seriously when he says, remember death. A lot. And the reason for this is because the Prophet ﷺ wants you to prepare for it. غفلة لقد كنت في غفلة وأسوأ ما يمكن أن يلاقي المسلم أو المؤمن أو العبد إذا كان في غفلة الموت فجأة. هذا أسوأ ما يمكن يعني موت الفجأة يعتبر مصيبة. اللي بيمرض بيبقى وبيموت أفضل بكثير من اللي بيموت فجأة. The worst thing that a believer or 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 a human being or a servant of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could happen to him when he is heedless from being ready and prepared for the hereafter is to die all of a sudden. And we have seen that nowadays it's becoming more common and common. Little by little, and this is signs or one of the signs of the Day of Judgment as the Prophet ﷺ yet for Mawt al-Fajr. People die all of a sudden. He was standing and he fell. And he went to sleep and did not wake up. He's driving and boom, an accident. And having said that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal a classmate and a close friend of mine uh, in Palestine, his name uh, Jamal Yusuf Mahmoud. Uh, Subhanallah, uh, he's riding one of those motorcycles that three wheels, electric. How expensive gasoline becoming over there? They're just trying to make things or make ends meet. Crossing a street, a car behind him passed him, going the other, almost made it the other side, a car from the other side plowed him straight on him. He literally flew out of the bike in the front of the car. I mean, literally flew, flew out of the bike in critical condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أن يشفي جمال شفاء لا يغادر سقما أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يصبره ويصبر أهله وأن يجعلها طهورا له. So who is thinking of this? Who is thinking that? Is he thinking when he crossed the street that's going to happen to him? No. He's happy. He's driving, saving whatever you could think of it, a new thing, a new ride, going to work. Thinking that everybody is wide awake when you have the cell phones and when you have uh, phone calls and you have all of this, don't ever expect that you're going to make it safe simply because you are safe 
or you're driving safely. A good driver is a defensive driver, is to worry about other drivers a lot more than you worry about yourself making an accident. And that's subhanAllah, I, mean, I always say when you make the dua, subhanAllah, when you ride a horse, when you ride a camel, when you ride a cat, when you ride a dog, when you ride anything, you make that dua, it doesn't matter what you ride. And at the end of that dua, you say, وَإِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا لَمُنْقَلِبُونَ And surely we will be going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, you're driving, you're going to work, and you're saying a dua, we're going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you're going to die in this ride. And I always say that us driving cars every day, we are endangering our life more than diseases, more than anything. And we don't think about that. You don't think about that. You fight with your wife, you fight with your children, you fight with your husband, and you leave the house angry. And God knows if you ever come back or not. How can you live with that as a husband or as a wife when the wife or the husband leaves and you are sitting at home expecting that person to come and you are mad and angry, you could be the reason too, and then he doesn't come back. How can you live with yourself? How can you live with yourself knowing that you could have solved the problem, you could have forgiven, you could have... That's why I always tell the children when you leave the house for school, kiss their hand and ask them and beg them to make dua for you. Call them every now and then and ask them to make dua for you. The dua of the mother and the father is accepted for the children. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Every time ask your mom and dad to make dua for you, whether you are old or young. And expect that death is going to come to you and you have no idea when. So this is something that we don't pay too much attention to. If we think about death, we forgive ourselves and we forgive others. And we live our, our life basing it on, I don't want to say, I wish my mom is alive, or I wish my dad is alive, or I wish my son is alive, or my wife is alive. Why do I have to wish when I can fix it now? Why do you have to be angry? All Why can't you resolve it? Why can't you forgive? Get it over with. You're living for the hereafter. You're going to die. You're going to die. It's as simple as that. What do you take with you? Hasanat. Are you getting hasana? No. At the same time, if the other person dies, are you willing to live your life regretting it and feeling in remorse? I could have done this, I could have done that. Why did I say this? Why did I say that? It's all my fault. Big deal. It's all your fault and the person is dead. It's all your fault and you have no chance or choice or a way to make it up. Why don't you make it up now? It's our arrogance. Wallahi. It's our pride, it's our self-attachment that I love myself, I'm not willing to humble, I'm not willing to forgive, it's me, he hurt me, you attack me, it's always me, me, me. We live for this. Unfortunately, that's not our life. Wallahi, it's not our life. You're a miserable person. If everything you look at is you, you want to be respected and you want to be honored and you want to be humble, people humbling themselves for you, who are you? Who are you? Or when you see someone mistreating you or not thanking you, you go crazy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not getting that. The Prophet sallallahu is not getting that. Who am I to ask for it? Your creator, without him nothing, you have not, you're not even here, you don't exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا مَا إِلَكْ ذِكِرْ وَلَا مَعْرُوفٍ مِنْ إِمْتِ وَلَا كَانْ إِلَكْ أَصْلٍ فِي الدِّنِيَ وَهَلَّا بِكُولْ أَنَا أَنَا أُبْتِشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ وبتعص الله وما بتشكر الله وهو أسبغ عليك نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة طب مين أنا لا أجي أطلب هذا الشيء منا؟ Who are you 
to come and ask and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he does to people and he barely get thank you. I'm not saying worship, even thank you, even alhamdulillah. Many people don't even say it. So brothers and sisters, reflection over this ayah, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَ You've been heedless. Don't be heedless. Talk about death, remember death, plan for death, live for death. As Umar ibn Khal Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, أَقْبَلَتْ الْآخِرَةِ أَقْبَلَتْ أَقْبَلَتْ الدُّنْيَا مُدْبِرَةً وَأَقْبَلَتْ الْآخِرَةِ مُقْبِلَةً وَلِكُلِّ مِنْهَا بَنْ مِنْهُمَا بَنُونَ فَكُنْ مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَكُنْ مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Dunya is departing and the hereafter is coming. Each one has special people who attach themselves to it. Be from the people who attach themselves to the hereafter. Work for it, live for it, plan for it. This is your final abode. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our final abode is in the Firdaus al-A'la. Jazakum Allah khairan. And don't forget, please, your dua for my friend and brother, Jamal Yusuf Mahmoud. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an yashfi Jamal shifa'an la yuadiru saqman wa yusabbirahu wa yusabbiratah. آمين يا رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته